If you're trying to make any kind of meaningful, effective change in your life, you've come to the right place. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of We're Talking Shift. So, a little announcement today. Um, I have a new show producer. Yes, Mr. John Morris will be coming to us every week now from across the pond in Scotland. Uh, he's going to be taking over for Christy, who is on uh, to focus on some other things. I will really miss her, but I'm very excited for her as she embarks on her next adventure. If you are a longtime listener, then you may recall that John has actually been a guest on my show before. Uh, last March, I believe it was, episode 122, where we had a fabulous conversation. So if you want to just get uh, more of a feel for John, make sure you jump over to episode 122 and listen to what we talked about there. But uh, I'm, I'm excited to welcome him to the show as my new producer, and I think you all are going to love him. So, hey, John, welcome. Welcome in this capacity. Thank you very much. This is a, a very, very new role and uh, something that obviously we're very, very excited about. So it's going to be, I think it'll be a, a lot of fun and uh, yeah. we'll see where we end up, I suppose. I think, yeah, we will. We're going to end up somewhere. And I, <laughs> I have, I'm very optimistic that it will always be good. Um, we always have really good, compelling conversations. So I think, uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. Today, uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking, of course, a lot more about making health shifts. Uh, it's uh, clearly health is foundational to living a quality life. So we're never going to stop talking about it in some way, shape, or form here on We're Talking Shift. I know that um, a lot of people are, are probably getting a little bit tired about hearing um, everything under the sun about the current health situation happening. Or maybe they're not. I don't know. But given that it's still in our faces, then I guess, uh, you know, and it may be for some time, I guess we really just can't ignore it. So. I think the whole point about today is since it's it's still here and even if it wasn't, we have a multitude of other health issues that are actually have been with us longer, have no sign of diminishing, and in many ways are far are far worse. They just have taken a back seat. So, uh, you know, the thing is what can we do about any of this? Can we do anything about any of this? I think we can, and that's gonna be our focus today. What can or should we be doing? What is in our control? So with that being said, how are you feeling, John? <laughs> Well, today I'm feeling uh, slightly better than what I have been doing. Uh, my body's been battling with a few health issues over the last week or so, but uh, it isn't COVID, which is always good. Uh, so on the whole, all good. How about yourself? Good. Yeah, I feel really, really good. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I had a little bout uh, with the um, the number one health nemesis <laughs> right <laughs> now. Um, and uh, honestly, I, I have to say... Um, it was f for me, I would qualify it based on all of the degrees that I've heard that this uh, can hit people with. I would qualify this as a, as a minor speed bump for me. Okay. So, um, you know, um, had it, had a little touch of it, felt on a scale of one to 10, I usually feel like I'm at a nine or a 10 on any given day for a couple of days, felt like I was at about a five okay. and then uh, and then, you know, uh, after those first couple days, I felt like I was vacillating between, you know, like sevens and eights back and forth. And now, uh, I'm, I'm back to kind of about a 9.5. So, you know, it was, uh, I have to say for me, it's, um, it's not a big, it wasn't a big deal. It was not at all a big deal. It really didn't, um, interrupt, um, my life. It didn't interrupt. Interrupt. Um, I cut back a little bit on work, but just kept working and it's all good. It's, it was all good. So, um, now it's behind me. Now I have antibodies. Now, um, I'm good to go. 
Well, that's really good to hear. And Laurie, you know, I, I've known people that have gotten COVID, you know, but you are really the first person that I've sat down in this, I suppose, line of work where we're actually talking about, you know, you having this and, and what, you know, what, what it was like. So that's what I suppose I'm curious about as well was when did you start to notice that there was something potentially that you weren't feeling right? And what, what did it really feel like for you in these early symptoms? Yeah, so I thought, because here in Cody, Wyoming, we have had smoke almost the entire summer to one degree or another uh, from all of the fires that have been burning all summer on the West Coast. So whatever's on the West Coast, you know, eventually makes its way through here. Um, and we had had uh, a, a few days of just an intense new round of smoke. So after a couple of days of that, it just uh, felt like a, a mild sinus infection trying to get a hold of me. And um, so I just assumed that's what it was. Uh, but then after about, I don't know, a week or so, realized that, you know, it was definitely something a little bit different than that. And, um, you know, not sure, not sure how, uh, not sure how, <laughs> how it came about. Um, and at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really started out like, ah, I just feel like I have a little bit of a sinus infection. Okay. And then it just kind of turned into some mild, you know, a little bit of mild body aches for just a couple of days and some fatigue that doesn't normally happen to me. And that's when I was like, mm, this is something a little bit different. Yeah. So, you know, I think, uh, I, I think, it's probably one of those things that depending on your personal um, level degree of health and what you've yeah. got going on in your environment and your lifestyle, all of those things play a role into how things are going to affect you. Um, I think that since um, health has been such a priority for me for my entire adult life that feeling like I'm, I'm always in a really high state of health. So I think I could be wrong, but I think that played a role in this not really moving the needle all that much for yeah. me, just a little bit. So um, I, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it feels like. That's what my gut tells me. It, it you know? seems to be the, you know, almost like for, for the research that I did for this, you know, it's like the, the prognosis by a lot of the doctors that they say, you know, if, if you are, you know, severely overweight or if you're not taking care of yourself if you're not eating correctly if you're eating too much junk food all of those things seem to be contributing factors and obviously you have you know you, i've worked for you for probably the last year and it's been that case that we've talked about health and nutrition so much that mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me at all that you were able to fight that off but again i, I suppose like anyone it depends on the severity of you know how bad you get it and how bad you don't and it, it's down to a lot of mm -hmm. contributing factors as to you know how bad someone yeah. takes it i suppose sure and i think uh i think you know your mindset has so much to do with it as yeah. well and what you know what's bad for one person another person may not consider that bad you know if if uh, if two people are experiencing ex the exact same symptoms, one person may have a higher tolerance and say, eh, you know, on a scale of, you know, one to 10, mm, this is like maybe a, I'm at a discomfort level of maybe a five or a six. Yeah. Another person with the exact same thing going on may not have a very good tolerance for that kind of discomfort and may say, oh no, I, this is horrible. I can't get yeah. out of bed. This is a two for me. <laughs> or a one. So, you know, there's, there's that kind of subjective um, factor that plays a role. And I think, um, you know, your mindset about how you deal with any kind of discomfort is, it, it does play a really big role. It really does. And, you know, the more you dwell on how, um, on how you feel and qualify it as good or bad, the, the more, you know, the more that that becomes your reality. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, it, it, it literally is down to the mindset of what you're willing to accept. And it's often what you're willing to accept indicates how long you're going to suffer. You know, that's certainly been from yeah. my experience. 
Um, yeah. You know, as we were talking yeah. a little bit off air, you know, I had a, a cold. Normally when I have a cold, it's severe and it normally lasts two or three weeks. And again, with the mindset stuff, with a lot of stuff that was going on, it's lasted, what, two days, three days. It was aggressive, but it was fast. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I mm -hmm. think mindset certainly has a lot to play uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, you know, it's funny because I'm sitting here going, God, I've ruined such a good record. <laughs> because I, I literally, I, I literally can remember the last time I had what a person would qualify as a flu and it was 2001. That's how wow. long ago I've had anything that would qualify as a flu. That's how long ago. And the last time I had something that you would call a bad cold and it was a horrendous one was 2007. That's the last time. <laughs> Other than that, I have not dealt with any kind of, you know, cold flu stuff for that many years. And so that's why I was kind of in denial. <laughs> I was in denial at first. I'm like, ah, oh, it's just a little irritation from this, you know, the fog of smoke we've been dealing with um, since June. Uh, and then I'm like, nah, I can't be anything else. No. <laughs> Yeah, and then I was to try to will it yeah. <laughs> into something else. You know, I was like, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm into mindset and I'm into, you know, everything. You have so much control over yeah. what you're going to experience physically with your mind, which I think is true, but it's a skill that has to really be developed <laughs> to get to those, you know, to get to like Jesus level. <laughs> Not there yet. Not there. I don't know anybody that is <laughs> walking the earth right now that's there yet. Maybe somebody. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I tried, but I, I failed at that. <laughs> but but I do think that it absolutely made a difference in um, in just how my experience was. Yeah. How am I going to qualify this? Um, you know, what role does meditation play? You know, mindset, all of that. So I just threw everything at the kitchen sink at it, and like I said, this turned out to be kind of a minor speed bump for me. But and those things worked for me. That's interesting. What I wanted to ask as well is, you know, because obviously being over here in the UK, we see a lot of things that apparently folks in the US don't. And there's a lot of fear mongering, scaremongering, especially on social media and on the news happening mm -hmm. right now. Did that have a factor mm -hmm. in your mindset? Um, did, was that even an issue for you with all of the, I suppose, conflicting views that are going on right now and the uncertainty of it all? I can honestly say no, not for me. I could see that going on, you know, I can see that going on everywhere, um, of course. Uh, it's hard not to because all of the sources that, you know, all of the news sources, all of the usual mm -hmm. sources where people get their information from are constantly 24 seven delivering um, confusing information, conflicting information, and information that is causing um, massive fear. So I could see that from the very beginning. Um, I never bought it. I just, I just, you know, again, and it's not that I had any like inside information or anything. My inside information was my, was, was my gut, was my intuition, was my own you know, my own relationship with my only true authority saying, uh, be discerning yes. about what you are willing to believe and take in. And that's, that's where I go. What I go to the only real authority with the capital A <laughs> and that's where I have my conversation. Yeah. And that's where the message to me is be discerning what's right for you. And that's what everyone needs to do. Somebody else may feel totally different. And I think that that's fine. I think that that, you know, that's the, the main thing is that you have to really think about what feels like it really is the best source of information and the best thing that makes the most sense for you and your family. So fear doesn't work for me. Yeah. I just don't think that for me in my life, for my family, making especially really important decisions from a place of fear, uh, it just, it doesn't yeah. seem like good criteria to come from. I really want to look at, um, you know, how does that 
what are the things that we need to make decisions around? Um, what are the risks if you make this decision? What are the risks if you make a different decision? Um, what are the benefits, short term, long term, um, for you know whatever the decisions are? And then, and then kind of you have to, for me, take those logical things, reasonable things into consideration. Factor in what your gut tells you. And, and then make the choice that you feel will allow you to sleep at night. Yeah. I think so, that's actually I'll, a really good analysis. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I think it's a really good analysis and a step-by-step -step process there almost, because again, we, we seem to think very, very differently to a lot of folks that again, are reacting out of fear. I know when all this began, there was a lot of folks that again, was conspiracy theories and who's involved with this and who's involved with that. And, and it, it's so easy to get sucked into this. And these are some people that I've known for 20 plus years professionally. And it's like, mm. oh my goodness, you know, it, it was actually frightening when you look on the other side that they could be sucked in that easily to these things. But fear does insane, you know, things to people. And from that psychological point of right. view, it's one of the, dare I say it, but the best marketing tools that are out there. So obviously oh, sure. we're encouraging people a lot to, you know, not respond out of fear and to really think about the bigger picture here for sure yeah yeah and it, you know fear is there's no doubt it's been used as as um a manipulation tactic uh you know it's it's proven through the ages yeah. that it works so of course you know that that's the disappointing thing about this is um when when industries use that to manipulate yeah. and, um, you know, wield power, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's disappointing, um, of course, but it's not anything new. No. It's, it's, it's a, it's an age old playbook. So, you know, I think that if you are willing to look at that, understand what is going on and then go ahead. And if, you know, make the decisions that are right for you yeah. that, that just but but i think going into it with your eyes wide open and recognizing uh what's going what's yeah. going on is an important thing to at least be willing to consider that yeah definitely and, and i think it's very important as well because a little bit of uh, factual research i suppose that the news and the media when it very first came out you know was basically to be almost like that interlink between us and the government and this is what I managed to find out yesterday when I was doing all this study that it, it was basically that we were able to find out, you know, well, the government had a meeting about this and the government had a meeting about that and it would keep you informed. That was the designed purpose for it. But what I ended up happening was it wasn't drawing in terms of, you know, newspaper sales, because who really wants to read about all the government meetings and things, but also when the TV started to, to be more prominent and things, the news wasn't selling. You know, so it was a case of right, right. Oh, that there's you know something that happened with the president. You know, back in the '60s, president was shot. Oh, the way that sold, they jumped onto that, and then all of a sudden it was bad news, bad news, bad news. How much more bad news? Oh, we've no more bad news. Let's create bad news, and it just went on and on and mm -hmm. on and on. And now it's all about ratings, and people have lost such faith in their you know in their media. You know, it's very difficult to get yes. it back. And I suppose to, to a degree, the same with the government. You know, if, if you've got, you know, 100 people there that are, you know, doing some dodgy stuff, you might have 10,000 people there that are doing some phenomenal works that are there. Um, so there was a lot of interesting right. stuff that came out for, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You just don't get to hear as much um, about the good things of and course. good people trying to do good works. Yeah, yeah uh, I would like to hear a lot more about that. And it's there, but you have to proactively seek it out. Yeah. It's not offered up like all of the other uh, more salacious and frightening things are. It, but apparently so, just because it doesn't sell. And it's like, well, if you want to know why the world is in the state that it's in, look at the, you know, it's a reflection of people's minds. So it's just like, guys you know if, if we put some good stuff into the news like man says puppy you know or, or whatever it right. might be then it's not only making people feel better but also that will have a knock-on effect on you know on, on their behavior and the stuff going forward as opposed to mm -hmm. dare i said the garbage that's being produced these days yeah yeah it uh 
kind of makes you um, scratch your head and go, uh, what's the what's the reason for that? Yeah. I mean, you know, we all have our own ideas. We, we, <laughs> we'll save that conversation for another day. But but yeah, I think, you know, I think we're going to I I think the main point that I want to drive home today is again, whatever it is that you are afraid of or suffering from or afraid you may suffer from when it comes to your health, rather than focusing on what might happen or what what you fear is happening to you now, focusing on what you can do, focusing on what your body is capable of doing. It has shown you um, over the course of your whole life. So however old you are, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, for that many decades, your body has been proving to you every minute of every day that it's taking care of you. It's doing things that you don't even know it's doing because that's its job. That's what it was designed to do. It came with all of its parts. It came with all of its, you know, ability to self-organize and to heal and to do the things. Your body is literally breathing you while you're sleeping. That's how insanely intelligent it is. So I think that, you know, I have gotten into this habit every morning when I wake up, I wake up and I go, oh, thank you for breathing me while I was sleeping. I didn't have to worry about doing that. I didn't have to worry about making sure my heart was still beating. I didn't have to worry about making sure that my digestion was working. You know what I mean? It's when you really, you take so many basic fundamental and incredibly important things for granted. And, you know, when you think about it, what all you have to do is a few fundamental things during your waking hours to support it in doing the things that it's designed to do. And it's gonna do the rest for you. And I think it's so amazing that um, we forget, we forget that because, well, you know, it's our vehicle and we've been living with it our whole lives and we just, we take it for granted, right? And, and we don't even realize sometimes, you know, how much we're sabotaging it and yet it's still it's still doing what it's designed to do to keep you alive i just find that to be phenomenal when i just sit and go i don't even have to worry about breathing i just do it now if i want i can manipulate it i can play with it i can breathe deeper i can breathe more shallow i can do all kinds of different breathing techniques which is fantastic but if i don't do any of those things no worries it's got me covered right it's really same awesome, with, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, same with my heartbeat. I don't have to worry about it. It's gonna still do what it's designed to do. It's still gonna pump blood. Can I manipulate that a little? Sure, I could go out and do a jog or a fast run or a sprint, or I can do some form of exercising. I can make it, you know, I can make my heart rate go up a little bit higher and then I can relax and I can bring it back down. So I have, I have some, you know, influence over that. But if I'm not thinking about it and I'm busy doing something else, it's doing what it needs to do. And I think that, I think that if we can be mindful of all of the amazing things that our bodies are doing for us, with us, to us, every second that we're alive, and you become mindful of that, and it really kind of takes you into a, a, a different place, you know, a, a place of, of gratitude and a place of, it, sh it should be, that's a very appropriate thing to feel awestruck yeah. about. See, that's right? the amazing thing. People are trying to go off to the moon and off to Jupiter and wherever else they want. And all they need to do is just look inside if they want to be in awe and, and amazed about everything. It, it's incredible. It really is. Yeah. There's a it's, whole universe going on yeah. inside of you in, in literally every cell is its own universe with all of this amazing functionality happening every single second of every day. And I just think that that is the most amazing thing to focus on. And then I go, all right, great. What, what do I need to do to make sure I'm supporting that yeah. and I'm not sabotaging that? And I think that's it's so not important. that hard. Yeah. Some 
right? Some, some movement, your body's designed to move. It's not designed to be sedentary. Doesn't mean you have to be a triathlete. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, enter fitness competitions, do that if you want to, but it really doesn't require that much. It just requires consistency, right? So some sort of movement. So your body's not, um, sedentary <clears throat> for hours upon hours, day after day. That's important. Of course, um, giving it the right fuel that it needs. So that's basically nourishing your cells. You are, you eat to nourish yourself at the cellular level. And I think, um, you know, we have way too much of the sabotaging stuff going in and not nearly enough of the stuff that our body thrives on. So, you know, being um, cognizant of everything, you know, that you're eating, that you're taking in, that you're drinking, is it helping or is it harming? It's really easy. And, you know, it's not to say that you have to be an extreme um, dieter or extreme in what you take in and what you don't. It, it's, it's, it's the exceptions to the rule are not what get us in trouble. So if the rule is generally it's really, it's really good. It's helpful. It's going to help me. It's going to help my body. It's going to give it what it needs to do what it needs to do to function optimally. If that's the rule, and then every now and then you uh, have an exception to the rule and you have something that you know is not the best, but that won't matter. Your, you, your body can handle that stuff. It's only when that balance gets flipped. And that's unfortunately is what's happened at least here in our country with the standard American diet is the balance is completely off. And the majority of what most people are taking in is sabotaging them. And with, with an occasional thing that is, is good thrown in there now and then. Um, but that's not enough. So it's really about just shifting the balance, I think, for a lot of people. I mean, over here in the UK, it's exactly the same. I believe uh, statistically that Scotland is, I believe, one of the top five uh, most obese countries in the world. So, you know, really? we're, we're, yeah, we're not that far behind, um, you know, and, and I think the education behind that, you know, really needs to be stepped up. And that's something that we're mm -hmm. doing. And working on and trying to help is, is really trying to educate people more than anything else. But what I'm interested in, Laurie, is obviously now you're full of energy and, and you know, we can see that, that you're feeling better and everything. But I have a two part question for you, if I can. What steps did you take to take care of yourself during this, you know, brief bout with this evil demon? And were the short term <laughs> effects? Um, and if there were, what were they that you felt? Okay. So, um, how did I take care of myself? Part one. And first of all, I would say for me, I wouldn't even qualify it as an evil demon. I think that there are much more evils out there plaguing people, mm -hmm. um, that have been sort of pushed into the shadows while this takes front and center stage. Yeah. Um, you know, it's an evil demon for less than 1% of the population. And, you know, I'm not pulling those numbers, you know, out of the air. We, they're all over. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Um, so, so there's that. Um, but you know, I just, I did, I did what seemed like the smart thing to do. Um, I, I rested when I needed to rest and I'm normally not a napper. I don't, I, I'm just not a napper during the day. I know some people are and swear by it, which is awesome, but it doesn't work for me. Um, but I napped when I felt a little fatigue come over me, I listened and I went and took a rest, you know, not, not long, not, not, not more than usually maybe 20, 30 minutes, um, of a rest. So I rested when I needed to, uh, if I felt a little achy, which I did in the first couple of days, I took some ibuprofen, which was miraculous and taking care of that. Um, I, uh, uh, my appetite was decreased a little bit. And I think that was fine because, um, you know, finding that balance, what I looked for was the balance between giving myself some good fuel and nutrition to help my body recover, but not too much so that I wasn't sending unnecessary resources to digestion. I wanted all my resources to go to, you know, rebalancing and healing. Um, so 
on that note, the, what I did, I didn't change my, my diet. I, my diet stayed the same, um, which is not always easy because when you're not feeling all that great, you're not really motivated, inspired to do anything like make an effort to get up and make a salad or make a smoothie. You know what, when you're not feeling well, it's like when you're a kid, all you want to do is lay in bed and, you know, eat chicken soup um, or something, yeah. you know, something easy. But usually the easy stuff is not the stuff that's your friend. So I made the effort to still stick with my daily um, nutritious, healthy smoothies so I could get the nutrition in. And um, I still had a salad every night, even though I couldn't taste it because I did lose some of my t sense of smell and taste. So even though I couldn't taste my smoothies or taste my salads, I still made them anyway. Um, and, uh, and then I took, um, I hydrated well, um, and that's not, not plain water. Uh, that is electrolyte water so water with some sort of something molecules in it for the for the water to grab onto so your body could effectively use it so water you know in the form of like coconut water which is super naturally high in electrolytes so coconut water and um and other forms of electrolyte water without any um sugar um fruit watermelon um, the sal you know, the food that you eat is that's got a lot water dense. So produce that kind of thing. Um, that's, that's really important. Um, sun and fresh air. And I think that that's another really big thing that it's easy to for people when they don't feel well to just want to curl up on the couch or in bed, you know, with a with a with a blankie and, and watch TV. Um, but Again, the sunlight is so healing in and of itself and, you know, helping, that's what we need to help our body produce, you know, vitamin D and we need, we need that. There's a, there's a deficit of that anyway across the population and that's been known for years and that is a big contributing factor to, um, you know, getting sick more easily. So I made sure that I got out every day and got at least, you know, a round or two of 15 to 20 minutes of sunlight, fresh air. Um, I, I did not do my usual workout routine because I just, I knew that that wasn't the right thing to do, but I did try to do movement though. I did try to do some, a little bit of stretching here and there and just a couple, just some movement so that I wasn't like stagnant all day. So hang, I have a bar that I hang from, you know, just doing that and um, doing some um, doing some squats, just moving, getting the blood yeah. flowing, you know, getting the muscles moving. So some minor, minor movement every day. Um, and then um, just bumped up the vitamins too, the supplements. So even more, I'm already a supplement person. I, I uh, not overly, but um, I think that it can only help. And so I bumped things up, um, zinc, 50 milligrams a day. I took green tea extract, oil of oregano. I took probiotics. Um, I took NAC. We did that, which is um, N-acetylcysteine. We did that. I did that every day. Um, you know, that's something that um, maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with it, but um, it it plays an important role in in your health. It bonds, the NAC bonds with glutamine or glutamine and, and glycine to form glutathione. And that is a very powerful antioxidant and uh, your body doesn't make it. Um, so you need to get it from, you know, an outside source. So uh, helping to get all of those extra antioxidants into your system, I think is important. So I just, you know, I, I thought that that was, that worked for me. I don't know if it would work for everybody. That worked for me to make this as smooth of, of a situation as possible. I, you know, the antioxidants, back to that for a minute, that really helps boost a person's immune system. So all of these things I'm talking about, a little bit of exercise, if you can, a little bit of movement, um, the sun and the fresh air, the nutritious food, all of those things are immune system boosters. And clearly, those are, that's what we need to do in order to fight off and recover quickly from something that's got, you know, got a hold of us. Um, 
so anyway, that's yeah. Oh, and I did take um, I took a detox bath. So I, I did uh, Epsom salts and baking soda. And uh, I don't I don't recall. I've read a lot about it, uh, all the details. But if you Google it, there's all kinds of great um, health benefits from the combination of Epsom salt and baking soda bath. So I, I soaked in there just to help, you know, pull, pull toxins out of the body and um, kind of regulate all of the electric stuff going on in your cells. And that felt really good too. That's really good. And that's really good to hear. And, and a lot of stuff that you, you know, said there is the stuff that a lot of the doctors are coming out with as well, which is, you know, natural instinct. Yeah you know, from what you said. Yeah. Have yeah. there been any- No junk food. No, well, well, that's one of the biggest contributing factors. So they're saying is people's weight, is the obesity, is the junk food, is, you know, a lot of different things that again, you know, people can find the information is, you know, out there. Uh, there's been enough interviews conducted about the thing. Um, but Lloyd, have there been any short-term effects that you felt at this point? Because everybody's talking about the effects, whether it's long-term, you know, short-term, anything like that. Have you felt anything personally, you know, since, since you know, having this? As far as like physical yeah. sh short-term effects? Is that so in mean? terms of your breathing, in terms of your own, um, mm. you know, because okay. this is, you know, some of the stuff that's, you know, seems to be the common stuff is your breathing, is your own um, thought process, is your behavioral patterns, anything like that? Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is I never had a breathing issue at all, not even remotely. Um, so all of the respiratory stuff that I've heard happens with other people, I, none of that, not even, not even a little bit. Um, the only thing that, um, is still kind of lingering a little bit is I still haven't regained all, all of my capacity for taste and smell. Okay. Um, so I'm, um, <laughs> every day I wake up and take a cup, sip of my cup of coffee and, and hope that I can taste it. And now it's still just hot. <laughs> so I'm, I'm eagerly waiting for that. I'm going to start Googling, uh, what are some crazy things I can try to, you know, uh, get the taste, but firing back up again. I don't know if there's any such way, but I'm going to look and I will let you know if I find a way. Um, but that, that, and then the only other thing is maybe just still quite not, um, not feeling like a hundred percent when it comes to firing on all mental cylinders. So just a little bit of, you know, wait, what was that one word, that word that I know really well. And now it's just like eludes me. <laughs> so there's been a, a couple minor occasions, uh, of that, but other than that, no, it's, uh, it's, it's fine. I feel actually pretty fantastic. So. I'll just, I think there's just that little tiny minor, you know, half a percent of those couple things that are still just uh, working themselves out. And I have no doubt that, you know, that'll be back to normal yeah. in no time. You okay. know, it's interesting talking about health. I was watching something on one of the news channels uh, the other day. I think it was just yesterday. And it was when it was an interview that a news anchor was doing with Dr. Fauci. And it was in the very beginning of this um, situation. And what he said was, um, what you should be doing is not worrying so much about masks and things. What you should be doing is getting rest and sunlight and a healthy diet. But we haven't heard that yeah. ever since. And I, I think it was interesting. I've got to read this stat to you. I was, I was reading something um, about some stats on the CDC. I'm just going to read it. It's, oh, and the World Health Organization. So back to what you were saying about obesity. All right. According to the World Health Organization, obesity is the second most significant predictor of who would be hospitalized or die from getting this um, illness just behind old age. The CDC reported in 2018 that in total, 74% of Americans are overweight. Now that was in 2018. I think that's inched up to 78% right now, wow. um, or it's a little bit, yeah. Okay, the CDC report stated that of the people that were admitted to the hospital due to this uh, illness, 50.2% were considered obese and 27.8% were overweight. 
about its findings, the CDC said, obesity increases the risk for severe COVID-19 associated illness, adding that preventing this illness in adults with higher BMIs, body mass indexes, and their close contacts remains important and includes multifaceted protection measures such as masking as well as continued um, inoculation prioritization and outreach for this population. So what I find interesting about that is, okay, they're suggesting for those people that are the most vulnerable, um, that they, that they mask and, um, that they get the vaccine, which is, which is fine. What is very interesting though, is there's not one word in that about any initiatives mm -hmm. to help them lower their BMI and get healthier. Not, not one word about what Dr. Fauci said early on, which was managing your health, getting healthy, eating right. Um, get, you know, getting some sunlight. No, it was all about don't change the condition that made you most vulnerable in the first place. Instead, how do we protect you? And I just yeah. was like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, it's, 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 it's really hard to get behind um, some of these suggested protocols when the, which which aren't necessarily evil in of themselves. I don't know if they are or not. I, I have no idea what's right for everybody. But what we do know is right is getting healthy yeah. and eating a better diet and getting some, you know, exercise and losing excess weight. Yeah. We everybody knows that, but you hear you, you don't hear about that at all. And that's very disappointing because that's what people need to hear is you need to get yourself healthier so that you have the ability to withstand and recover yeah. when something like this hits you. I think one of the sad things is, you know, that, that as I go further and work with teenagers and, and, you know, school systems and things, that it seems to be our systems, you know, it seems to be globally just are failing to teach people what they need to know. And it's the fundamentals that they need to know. Like, again, you know, your prevention is better than the cure. If you don't want to end up with severe diabetes, don't eat that excess mm -hmm. sugar. You know, <laughs> if you don't want to end up, you know, right. with X, Y, Z, then, you know, don't, don't get in that position. Um, and, right. and it's not happening. And, you know, fundamental skills, which, you know, children now need, I just not mm -hmm. being taught at school uh, or at college or at university and right. the biggest things and people are now being sent out into the world. And you honestly have to sit and think is, is the, the rules of the game designed so that, you know, the, the common person without doing a lot of research can't win. You really start to wonder, um, but then you've got to ring yourself back in, of course. Like I, I've um, mm -hmm. just looking at my own research, uh, Dr. McCullough, um, did a, an interview, he was, he's a guy from Texas, that echoes a lot of what you were talking about. And he was talking about the, uh, the metabolic flexibility. He was talking about, um, you know, eliminating processed foods and oils, which you know, you and I, we've talked a lot about um, in obviously work that we've done together, um, you know, maximizing your vitamin D levels, getting your blood count, you know, looked at and checked at and everything. All of those things that you've said that you did in your research, it's really nice to start hearing, you know, they, it, it, it correlates at least. Um, because mm -hmm. when I was researching this, you know, there were so many conflicting views that you're like, okay, now you've got to sift through all the junk to actually get to the core root of the, of, of the actual issue and what, you know, what, where you should be going. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, you, you do have to look for, um, that kind of information, yeah. but you don't have to look that hard. No, it's. No. You, but you do have to look because it's not being offered up everywhere like like all of the other information is. Um, but if you look even just a little bit, you will find uh, endless yeah. credible sources and doctors and experts and scientists and virologists. You will find experts from all genres telling you these things. Yeah. So, you know, and I think that that's one of the reasons kind of back to what you asked me earlier about, you know, the fear mongering. I think that's one of the reasons that I had no fear around this was because I knew that um, 
I knew that my health was at such a um, an optimal state that if I did catch anything, I would be uncomfortable for a few days and then I would recover and it would be no big deal. I knew that instinctively. I knew that because of the state of health I keep yeah. myself in. So yeah. there was no reason for any fear to be have any place in my mindset. But, and I think that if, if um, like right now, back to what you were saying, yeah. you know, a, a little bit of research, a little bit of being proactive, yeah. you'll find all kinds of credible um, sources that will tell you, here's what you can do, which is very similar to many of the things that we've talked about. And you, I think you will feel so much better then because you always feel less fear and mm -hmm. always feel more empowered when you feel, when you are taking action steps. Yeah. Yeah. So rather than sitting around in a fearful state and trying to basically, you know, it's like that fight or flight, yeah. instead of fleeing and hiding and isolating, um, be proactive about what you can do. And, you know, that's going to go so far into making you feel like you don't have to live in a state of fear. I completely agree. I completely agree. And, and I suppose that leads us to, you know, a, a very interesting point when we're talking about fear mongering and scaremongering with regards to the vaccine, because certainly over here in the UK, it is one of the biggest things we see, obviously, in the US as well, it's being pushed, you've got people mm -hmm. from polar, you know, opposite views, you should get the vaccine, you shouldn't get the vaccine. And, mm -hmm. you know, from, from what I, you know, was looking at yesterday with, with one of the doctors, he was saying, look, it doesn't stop you taking this. You know, it doesn't stop you getting right. the virus um, or, or, and they can't even make up their mind now whether it's a virus or a disease, you know, depending who you listen to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's something I'm curious about now is because, you know, followed you, you know, and heard a lot about what you had said before taking COVID. Has that changed your view now? Would you, you know, willingly take the vaccine now after having it? Um, no, I mean, what for? Exactly. Like, I, I there's there's not one compelling piece of evidence to tell me how I would benefit from yeah. that, but there is plenty of um, uncertainty around mm -hmm. it that tells me mm, I don't think I'm going to go there because yeah. I don't I don't need to. Um, See, no. I, I agree and with I, that completely because of the research that's been done. And it, it's more, you know, it, it normally takes vaccines 10 to 15 years to actually get approved properly. This was approved, what, in six months? And it, it, it's not so much, you know, how it's affected. I think it's just more the uncertainty now. And there's so many things happening with it that it's like, oh boy, do I really want this swimming around in my body? I know personally, because I've had reactions with, you know, medication and other stuff from the past. I don't want that stuff swimming around in my body. And it's it's good, I suppose, in some ways to hear someone, you know, of, of, a, of a similar mind. Yeah. And it's not to say that um, it's not right for some people. Mm -hmm. I, I know lots of people and family members that um, went ahead and made the choice to get it and they're they're fine. They've had no negative side effects that that anybody's aware of, and um, and they feel good about it. And I think that you know, if people that make the decision that that is the right choice for them, bravo. I mean, I salute you. I think that everybody really needs to just do what they feel is the right thing for them. And I just happen to know that for me, I don't need that. So that's the right choice for me period. Um, beyond that, I just, you know, I say, do, do what you got to do. I, I really do. I think my, my biggest thing is, um, my biggest thing is then just, you know, everyone needs to show some grace to people that make different choices. Um, and if you yeah. feel good about it and you feel good about what it's supposed to do for you, then what other people do or don't do, um, doesn't really need to be part of your business. I think that's really important. I think that's a really powerful thing because, you know, so often people get upset if you don't take, you know, their view as opposed to saying, look, this person's, you know, they've done the research, they've done all the thoughts and everything for themselves. 
I just got to trust that they're making the right decision. So I think that's a really powerful thing, Lori, for, for sure. Do you think it should be um, factored in if somebody is vulnerable in health that they should be, you know, more inclined perhaps to, dare I say, take the vaccine or not take the vaccine? Should that, you know, really factor in if they're, you know, more vulnerable in health? Honestly, I don't know. Okay. And I, I frankly don't know that anybody knows. Yeah. So um because again um this is a relatively new kid on the block um nobody knows how it's going to grow up <laughs> when it's an adult what how it's going to behave so i don't i don't i i could not in good conscience yeah. even say that i would have an opinion about that because what the hell do i know yeah and I, I, frankly, what does anybody really know? At, at the moment, it appears to be behaving like a stroppy teenager because it's mutating left, <laughs> right and center and throwing a tantrum. Uh, there's a new strand out that's uh, what B117. This affects more children than it does in adults. Um, you know, and, and I can understand there's a lot of fear going around for people right now. And, you know, but like you say, fear often comes from a lack of information. The information's out there. People just got to dig a little bit and, and see um, for sure what's there. Mm -hmm. um, has this yeah. you know, really changed how you, I suppose, want to interact with the world? Are you in a position now where you're like, well, I've had it once. I want to stay at home now and, and just curl up in a ball and watch TV. Or are you saying, you know, I, I still want to travel. <laughs> I still want to, I still want to go out. I know the answer from knowing you, but I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, um, I, I have accepted that with um, all of the new rules that um, states and countries are trying to put yeah. into place, I've accepted the fact that there may be enough restrictions now that might um, either force a person to have to make a choice they would prefer not to make in order to go those places or um just pr simply pr preclude you from going yeah. um there's no place that i want to go to you know outside of the the states badly enough that i would um compromise my personal health values um you know and my convictions um to go so if if that becomes um inevitable uh where you know you have to do certain things in order to enter uh another country or something then i i won't be going um and hey that's all right i i'm very fulfilled where i live so that's all good i i hope that doesn't happen um there's a lot of beautiful places that i, I in the world that i haven't seen yet but um you know it is what it is so it's interesting um, for it's sure funny. because i know I, like in the uk and in france and in other places you know they're talking about uh, the passports and and all the other stuff that's going on there and and like you said that there mm -hmm. is a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear um i know here right. in the uk they explored that briefly um but one of the chief spokespeople you know said look we're, we're not putting this you know in place right now um i just think there's a lot of uncertainty now for, for people as a result of you know this pandemic yeah. and, and everything else that's that it's it's you know it's got the attention because of the media but it, as a whole you know it's like you said it's one percent of people that are of the population that have actually had it um been sick with it you know and and whether or not that's correctly labeled or not is you know open to interpretation as well but it's it's interesting mm -hmm. the fact that it, it's been I guess with the with the use of social media, with the news, with everything that's there, it's like it's it's just been bred into this, you know, giant rock star almost, um, because of I guess because of people's ability now to be able to talk about it. Well, that's that's true. It's it's just um it's all the news. Yeah. And again, I think um I, I think having the discipline to keep your own mind about things and, you know, do um, do what you feel is right for you and your family. Um, that's that's what's in your control. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think that, you know, we have to understand that. <laughs> the medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry 
need repeat business. Yeah. They, they depend on returning customers to stay in business. Yeah. Um, you know, th this is, unfortunately, um, our whole um, medical industry has, seems like it's become um, less about, and, and I'm not speaking for everybody. I know there are a lot of excellent, good-hearted, well-intentioned medical practitioners out there. But we also know that there are, um, there appears to be more of an effort to hook a customer as opposed to curing a patient. Yeah. Um, you know, and that that's what any savvy business that uh, has a product or service to sell does. Um, so healthy people don't make for good repeat customers in those businesses. And so, you know, um, you, the more you are willing and able to t take control of your health, be responsible for your health, um, and, and become just a healthier person, the less power those industries will have over you. It's, you know, it's, so it's doable. Yeah. It, it's doable to not be at the mercy of, of those organizations. I mean, and, and obviously, you know, there's a place for all of that. I'm not saying that there's not. I was quite delighted to be able to, you know, eat as many ibuprofens as I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, you know, and obviously other things more serious, but I'm talking about the things that are under yeah. our control. Yeah. I'm not talking about, you know, if you get injured in a car accident, I'm not talking about needing, you know, you needing somebody to put your bones back together. Um, I'm talking about the, the lifestyle yeah. Um, diseases that we have full control over, um, that you can make new choices about and up level your health, mm -hmm. you know, exponentially by simply stopping to do some things and starting to do others. And then you're going to feel like a person that is much more empowered, much more in control of your life, much more in control of um, how you're going to be moving through the world. It's interesting to, to kind of, you know, just in a world of just, you know, infinite thought, you know, to see how many of these diseases and illnesses that people are facing and having horrific problems with right now could be eradicated by them just taking care of their own eating, their own drinking, you know, their own stress levels, their own mindset. I think people, I don't know, maybe they've been conditioned in a way that just, you know, has almost tried to eliminate the power from them. As opposed to saying, you know, actually, I do have the power to take control of what I eat and what I drink and what I watch and what I think about and my own stress levels and, and X, Y, Z. And you start to notice the effects. Laurie, obviously, you've been in, you know, food and nutrition for so many years now. Um, you know, what would your thoughts be about that, you know, regarding how many, you know, potential illnesses that people are now facing because of their diet? It has to be a lot of, 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 I suppose, things that are up there that people could eradicate by themselves, as opposed to having to rely on, you know, a ton of pills. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like we've already talked about, um, most of the most of the things that people are suffering from on an annual basis and dying from are self-imposed yeah. conditions. Yeah. They are. They are lifestyle choices that people have been making over the course of many years, and it finally catches up with you. Um, I think it's um, it's, a, it's it's over seventy percent of the population, at least here in the states, are on uh, two, three, four, yeah. five prescriptions, um, and it's become the norm. Although that is not normal. No, that is not normal for the human body to require that, and. Uh, it, you know, that's, people say that um, trying to, trying to eat healthy is expensive. Um, and I guess, depending on how you look at it yeah. and what you consider expensive, maybe, maybe not, um, you know, it's, it's, it's simply how do, are you going to decide you're going to allocate your resources, but I'll tell you what is the most expensive thing is ill health. Yeah. That, that trumps everything. Having, having yourself be in in um, less than less than reasonably good health, that's a huge expense. That's a huge cost. That's a cost of 
not only money, you know, for for doctors and hospital stays and prescription medications, but it's um, it's a, the biggest cost is your quality of life. I mean, you know, we have the ability to to live into, you know, really ripe old ages, but who wants to yeah. if the quality of those years sucks? What's the what is the point of that? Right. So the cost is much greater to yeah. not eat healthy, to not, you know, live a healthier lifestyle. And again, I think that because people are I think we, I think we are, I think we've gotten very addicted to comfort. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, as we advance in so many ways, uh, those advances always mean, how can we make things easier? How can we make things better? How can we make things more comfortable? Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the more we have things um, to do stuff for us, the more, the more comfortable we are, the less that's required of us. And the less that's required of us, um, the weaker we get, the more vulnerable we get, the less capable we are of doing anything. So I, I feel like, you know, this addiction to comfort is something that we have to be really, really cognizant of in our lives and ask ourselves, do I, is this really, um, is this really doing me a service? Yeah. All of, all of these creature comforts and all like, you know, we don't even have to get up. I remember as a kid having to get up to turn the channel yep. or to, ex <laughs> you know, to, you have to get off your ass, off the couch, walk over a few feet to your television to adjust the volume or to change the channel. And now, I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. You know, you're sitting there, you're all comfy and then you want to make an adjustment and you're like, where's the remote? Oh man, it's over on the other table. And it's like, you know, if, if they can, if, it, it's like, if they can, invent a little grabber thing that you can just grab your grabber and extend that over to the table to grab your remote and bring it back to you so that you can push the button or now maybe you just say um you know maybe you just use a voice command and you just say yeah. change the channel <laughs> right but those things are oh my god that's delightful all i have to do is speak the word or push this button and i don't have to do anything but is that really a good thing to have too much of that, mm, I don't think so. It, it seems that we're getting, you know, very far away from, you know, a lot of our core foundational stuff that we as human beings need, like to be out in nature, yeah. you know, to get recharged, yeah. to go out in the sun. You know, I mean, over here in Scotland, you know, I know we laugh about this a lot. I've got, you know, various people that I talk to in the States, they all make fun of me because we're in, the, we're in Scotland. From this point on, folks, it goes dark. You know, we, we, we see the sun again, like February, maybe, you know, after that, um, oh. you know, it, it gets dark for a long time and it gets dark, you know, a lot longer as well. So you might have, you know, however many multiple hours of darkness every single day. But like you say, you know, that's when you've got to take your, you know, your own, you know, destiny in your own hands and, and start taking the vitamins, start taking, you know, steps to yourself. Um, but, uh, you know, Laurie makes fun of me because yeah. we, you know, the, the sunlight starts to disappear. It starts getting cold here. You know, it's, it's lovely and warm out there in the States and we're at like, you know, 15 degrees at the moment, which is really cold. It's starting to get cold here. Everything's turned autumnal. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's done. It, it, this is the first week we had nice weather, you know, up until last Sunday. And then it started to really reduce and you've noticed a little bit more. The jumpers are coming on and, uh, you know, it's like, oh dear, here, here we go. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, but that, but that wow. is the reality. Like you said, cause I know with, with so many people in the States getting back, I suppose to on, on topic, um, you know, with the, the bills in the United States here in the UK, with the government system that we have in place at the moment, we don't pay for prescriptions here in Scotland. All of our healthcare is taken care of. So we see hmm. doctors, we go to help, you know, hospitals, medical staff, that's all paid for us. In the States, I know for a fact that, you know, one prescription can cost you guys up to $50, maybe even more. And if you've got, you know, three, four, five of those prescriptions, I had a member of staff that was paying, I think it was something ridiculous, like $1,200 a month for prescriptions. 
that's without seeing oh. doctors, without medical, you know, surgeries and all the other stuff. And you're thinking, if you can prevent this, <laughs> you know, and have that money back in your pocket, you know, what that's going to do for your quality of life. But to accept that, I mean, you know, being over here in the UK, you know, and, and hearing that, you know, is is insane. You know, I mean, what I think it's like five days in the hospital can cost up upwards of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, depending what you need yeah. doing. You know, you're always in yeah. debt unless you take control of of your own life. And sometimes it goes beyond, you know, and, and you've got to manage it. I get that. Um, but if you're not at that point already, then, you know, do something about it, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's just it. You can. There, there are, there are so many resources that that you know not everyone can afford to you know hire somebody to help them with it. Um, if you can, that's awesome. There are so many great people that can really help you turn things around. Um, but if you can't, there are countless free resources yeah. and you know if you've got access to the internet which most people do there are countless free resources that will help you take the steps um, to help you know you start turning your lifestyle choices the ones that directly affect your health around it's it's not as monumentous you know as you think um i've had i've had a, a lot of clients that um you know, when I say, give me your food journal for about 10 days, you know, tell me everything. If we're, if this is what you want to work on, cool, but let me see what you're currently doing. So I've got a starting point, you know, maybe you're doing a lot of things, right? Maybe there's a few red flags in there. Let's just see. Right. So, uh, I'll, I'll get in there like, Ugh. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I, you know, I, I get the, I get the 10 day or 12 day food journal and, um, you know, there's usually a couple things in there that they're doing right. And then there's a bunch of stuff that is probably sabotaging them. But the thing is, we, we don't, we don't start by going, okay, 180 degree turn here. We're wiping all that stuff out. And now you're only going to do this because that is daunting. Yeah. That is frightening. That is what they don't want to happen. So that's not what we do. That's a, that's setting somebody up for failure. Typically, you know, unless you are in dire straits and it's yeah. life or death, most people aren't going to do an extreme overnight change like that. Um, so we just start, you know, implementing, we start just s a s slowly phase out this or that a little bit. And we add in this or that. And, and then it's just a, s a, a slow, um, degree by degree, shifting mm -hmm. of what's what's going in and what you're going to stop putting in and that seems to really really work for people because you know now you've got you've got something that isn't so scary you have you know people that are very attached to their favorite things and they're afraid they're going to be taken away and nobody likes to have their their things <laughs> that they really love taken away nobody wants to have their favorite you know comfort food yeah. or or treat or any of their freedoms to make these choices nobody wants to have those taken away so so we don't we don't do that. We we do things in a different way. And at some point a person gets naturally to a place where they don't feel like they want those things all the time anymore. So when it happens organically, now you've made a lifestyle shift as opposed to I've, I'm in a state of denial and it, I'm relying on sheer willpower because yeah. that typically doesn't work for people. Yeah. But when you make the incremental shifts um, and then you realize how much better you feel, you start getting more addicted to how you feel and yeah. less addicted to what you're putting in your mouth or the addiction changes to the good fuel that makes you feel good. So it's an interesting process, but it works. Absolutely. It works really well. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. the whole thing with, uh, as we talk about in psychology, you know, the learned associations and, mm -hmm. you know, what you said there, you, you're learning new associations and you're unlearning your old associations, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah. like we've seen, you know, when you make those few small changes, it doesn't have to be anything humongous. When you make those small, you know, few changes, your life goes off in that other direction, which is incredible. 
Um, Laurie, I suppose, you know, one yeah. question I suppose that finally that's rattling around in my brain is, you know, with all that we've talked about today, what encouragement would you give to somebody that's going through, you know, COVID or has a family member going through COVID? What would you say? Well, I think, you know, whether it's whether it's COVID or any other um, health issue, um, I think that number one, um, I think you have to trust. Um, I think you've got to trust yourself and your own inner knowing. Um, I think, think, you know, you've got to trust that you know what's best for you. And especially with, um, you know, with the choices that we're up against right now. So, you know, doing your research and then trusting that you're going to make the decision that's right for you. Um, that's number one. Um, and then not worrying about other people, just what is right for you. Keep your focus where it needs to be, which is on yourself. Okay. Um, I think that you need to be able to stand strong in your morals and convictions. Um, which again comes back to trusting what's right for you. Um, I think that th this may sound a little weird and, and a little out there, but I think um, we have to be careful about worshiping false idols. Yeah. I think right now the false idol that is being um, held up for worship is um, under the guise of safety. And um, that's got uh, a hold of a lot of people. Um, and it's basically, you know, this, this thing, this entity, this message of I'll make you safe. This will make us all safe. So this is where you, this is, this is the salvation. Yeah. And I think that that's a false idol. And I, I think that we should be wary of that. Um, so minding your mind, as I always like to say, uh, which is, <clears throat> you know, tending to your thoughts, your, your mindset, um, your mental diet, what are you feeding it? Are you feeding it, you know, fearful things? Are you feeding it disempowering thoughts? Um, or are you minding your mind by, you know, tending it like it's, uh, you know, it's a garden that you yeah. are nurturing and fertilizing with everything good and you're keeping the bad stuff out. You're keeping the good things in so that it can flourish and produce good, good fruits and vegetables and, you know, beautiful flowers, right? So mind your mind. Um, I think getting really, really greedy about amassing great health mm -hmm. is a number one priority. I think we have to shift that greed for comfort over to a greed for amassing good health, um, you know, with, with your physical diet, with your mental diet, with your spiritual diet. Uh, I think that that should be a massive priority. I've, I've spoken about that many times on the show. Uh, there's a lot of greed going around in the world. There always have been. It seems to be human nature for some more than others. Um, but, you know, we can be greedy about things that we don't realize we're greedy about. Again, back to, for example, creature comforts. Um, and and so I think that shifting that, that need for greed into something that serves you well, and naturally, naturally, when you're at your best, the people around you are getting the best of you. So do it for yourself, do it for the people around you, do it for your family, for the people that you love so that you can show up as the best version of yourself for them too, so that you have every opportunity to rise to your full potential. So get greedy about your health for heaven's sakes. Um, and then I think, you know, for those, um, that have a relationship with spirit or with God, I think putting your faith there, putting your faith in, you know, your, your higher power, putting your faith in the only true authority, uh, not the false ones, not the self-appointed authority um, over your personal freedoms. But I think leaning into your faith, if that is something that is a part of your life, and I think at least, I think for the majority of the population there there is some sort most people 
um, have some sort of belief in God or a higher power or whatever you want to call it. And um, so don't give more power to the things of human, you know, man-made stuff than to the highest authority. That's so when you're feeling, you know, when you're feeling a little wobbly at the knees, when you're feeling uncertain, when you have the fear thoughts starting to get a little bit of grip on you, you know, lean into that. What what more powerful place is there to lean into? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's my advice. <laughs> I think it's important, like you say, you know, you, you deal with your, your inner core and not allow your external world to, you know, impact you um, as much as possible. You've got to keep yeah. that internal stuff sorted out. In here should always be happy because you choose how it, you know, plays out. So, Exactly. You choose. You have the choice. So um, sometimes it feels like we're swimming upstream, but it's okay. Uh you know what, just keep your wits about you, mind your mind, and it's going to be okay. It, it really is going to be okay. So embrace the opportunity that you don't know exists yet, but it's there. It's coming. All right. I think on that note, um, that, was, that was an interesting conversation. I uh, wasn't sure how this was going to evolve today. So thank you, for, uh, thank you for being a good conversationalist. This was fun. It's been a pleasure. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, hopefully people have got some really good information out of this as well. And, you know, it's going to be beneficial for yeah. them. Yeah, me too. Good food for thought. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for us today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you would like to find out what private coaching with me is all about, you can head on over to lauriebischoff.com. And if you haven't, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you never miss a show, share all of the good shift that we are talking about here on We're Talking Shift. Give us a rating and review. That really inspires other people to listen to what's being shared. And until next week, stay feisty, my friends. Stay healthy. Mind your mind. And go make some epic shift happen in your lives. And that goes for you too, Mr. Gary V.